and we're live testing one two okay very good uh, welcome back everyone uh, today we want to uh, start uh, we want to continue where we left off so where we left off previously was the uh, use of auto patch okay auto patch is uh, an, a utility to help us uh, you know do something about that uh, little you no know, problem we had the the angles uh, the problem we have with the angles uh, in terms of uh, how do I put this okay let me use gimp skim gimp, gimp okay right so let's let's do again we have a new file okay yes so auto patch let's say we have this cylinder thing uh, we found it a little bit difficult to assign patches to uh, both ends what auto patch does is to help us group these uh, these faces together into one patch and you'll group these other faces together in one patch so you have a patch you have a patch like thing here patch one and then you have like something like a patch two all right so this is like a patch two um, so uh, that's that's what auto patch does and what we found out was that when we run auto patch okay when we run auto patch uh, we can take a look at I think the poly mesh and we'll see what it looks like poly mesh and we can take a look at some boundary and we'll see that okay we have okay four boundaries over here one is called this uh, cylinder okay which will probably encompass everything then we'll have this uh, auto zero which is one of the patch and by look, taking a look at the number of faces we have here it is probably one of the entrances or exit likewise order 2 is the other entrance or exit so now of course we don't really know which is which I mean we have not defined uh, where our entrance and exit is in this particular case but what we see is that we, we do have this sort of segregation we have this uh, face here uh, okay so we have this this number of uh, faces here and then uh, we have this this other auto auto one being uh, this this other uh, face set this is this is the set of faces which kind of comprise of uh, what do you call that comprise of the walls Okay, so you have the entrance and, and the exit. The cylinder, of course, actually, uh, I think will um, it will kind of encompass you know everything else. But you can see here the number of faces is actually zero, so it's not actually uh, describing any kind of set. Okay. So from this, we apparently we should uh, be able to. I mean, ideally, we want to rename all these files. We want to rename all these boundaries, patches, etc., etc. So we want to rename all these boundaries, etc., uh, etc. Et but you know, every time we start, uh, we start a sim uh, we start doing this auto patch thing. Uh, these these all patches will be sort of the names of uh, you know the patches that we have. Uh, I mean, is that a way for us to rename it? I mean, we can always do it manually, right? We can always do it manually, no problem. But uh, ideally, if we run a script, we want to kind of automate the whole uh, patching process, right? So we have auto zero, auto one, and auto two. Okay, we have auto zero, auto one, and auto two, and we sort of want to rename it automatically. How are we supposed to rename it automatically? Uh, so how, how are we supposed to rename this thing automatically? So I want to bring your attention to this thing called change dictionary. This is yet another utility in open phone. Um, and you take a look at this uh, guide here. What, what is this here for you to do? This is a utility to change dictionary files. For example, it can be used to change the patch type in the field and uh, poly mesh boundary files. So what is this talking about? Okay, so uh, change dictionary can be used to you know edit the entries uh, you see over here. 
okay all the entries you see over here change dictionary will be able to change so, so to speak and not only this we can also um, take a look at the zero file see you can change directory into the zero directory and if let's say you you're not happy with the sort of uh, the fields over here the boundary field for example okay the boundary fields we don't like the boundary fields or the internal fields we can also use change dictionary to uh, you know, get rid of it or, or write something we like so this is a dictionary for us to sort of um, edit boundary conditions I mean the name sounds a bit generic change dictionary it doesn't really it doesn't it's not really telling what, us what it does but uh, it's useful uh, in the sense of being able to automatically uh, change boundary conditions and also you can automate the whole thing okay so what how do you find entries of this okay okay so one way to do it is to go into the form tutorials file then you just put grep r uh, change dictionary all right and automatically once you enter that you will see all the paths all the places where change dictionary has been run okay so for example you will see in the combustion the combustion uh, places all right you'll see change dictionary uh, is there you'll see a lot of this in the heat transfer cases as well why is that uh, very good there because it's talking about uh, multi-region simulation where you have uh, a solid I mean interacting a solid interacting with the fluid and exchanging heat between the fluid and of course the setup for that case is a lot more complicated and I won't cover it here because uh, you won't really have a use for multi-region simulation where you have uh, a coupled heat transfer between the solid and the fluid you just have a fluid in I mean a, a fluid mechanics case you just have a fluid flowing from one place to another place and that is about it you don't really need to deal too much or care too much about the solid okay but uh, what uh, what change dictionary again helps us to do is to uh, of course change the way change the way that uh, uh, yeah change the way that you know we uh, change the patches change the um, boundary conditions as well so let's take a look into one of these change dictionary files and see how it's run okay so one of the places we can look is this thing called uh, in the heat transfer uh, you have this sort of external coupled heater blah 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 I don't know if you, whether you can see it very well here but uh, this is the idea you you have this uh, CHD multi-region simple form external coupled heater so let's go into uh, CHD multi-region simple form so that will be found in the heat transfer and CHD multi-region simple form don't worry if you're not very sure you can always just explore later um, I'll just uh, visit so-called uh, you know uh, take a look at this area a lot this this area of the tutorials a lot so I'm pretty familiar but anyway you take a look at the change dictionary change dictionary okay where would you find it you will find it in the external coupled heater and in the multi uh, multi whatever radiation multi region heater radiation let's go to external coupled heater and we will go to system because that's where you usually find your change dictionary dictionary of course um, you will see lots of regions here don't bother too much let's go to the heater all right you will find change dictionary dict over here this is what the entry should look like so let's go change dictionary dict all right you can see um, over here you will have uh, you will have this this thing called boundary okay boundary mm. okay and you will have a min y min z max z these these are the names of your boundary fields okay so also here you will notice that the 
temperature is also being used. So temperature, uh, this entry is to help uh, us, you know, after we we do uh, after uh, after doing some of the meshing work, if you want to change the boundary conditions, you can add this entry here specifically for changing boundary conditions. But if you want to edit the entries, for example, you want to edit the entries over here, and let's say you want to change the type to wall, okay, so you can do it over here. And that's that's all we need to do. So we'll need to copy and paste the change dictionary over. Okay. Okay, so so let's see. Let's try and play around with it. So okay, let's take a look at change dictionary. Let's fiddle with it to see whether we get the results we want. So normally we will get it that uh, okay, we will have it such that uh, we can only change the uh, patch types. For example, you have a patch over here in the patch only in the constant and you go to poly mesh you look at the boundaries you will see that all the types here they are called patch but uh, if if you want to change it to a wall okay for example here why are these important these are for wall functions uh, which are very important in uh, turbulence modeling um, you'll get more to that later uh, but yeah, uh, these these are walls. The type the type is called walls. So uh, we want to change it to wall, and we can use change dictionary to do that. Okay, so let's copy one change dictionary dict over. All right, and we'll go to our system directory and clear. Okay, so let's copy this over. So we'll have this very long, uh, long uh, name here. Okay, we will need to copy this over. So C P A R. I don't need A R. Just change dictionary dict, and we'll need to copy it to this directory. So I'm going to copy this directory. I'm going to paste it here, and I'll just put dot. And when we list the files again, we should be able to see one more change dictionary here. Okay. So that's all, we just copy and paste it. So let's go to uh, take a look at this. All right, uh, clear. And let's, uh, I want to change this to the directory so that I have one side I, I'm using the VI editor, the other side I'm using, I'm just checking out what happens, okay? Uh, what the effects of change dictionary are. So. Okay, we, we have this part. We have this part where it says, you know, uh, I have this boundary, min y, min z, max z, etc. Uh, I don't want to deal with the temperature part. So what I'm going to do is just going to comment this. Okay, I'm going to comment this out. So when it comments out, it should turn, it may turn color depending on, you know, change its color depending on what, uh, what, uh, what you are doing, I mean, not, not what you are doing. Depending on what editor you, you are using, I'm using Vim, V-I-M. Um, so it should change the color, which is helpful to know what is commented and what is not. Okay, so anyhow, uh, we all have this boundary part that we want to change. So let's just do it quickly. All right, so pimple foam, blah, blah, blah. We have lots of scripts here. And what we want to do is to uh, change the dictionary. So we will have boundary files that we want to change. So let's go to constant and poly mesh and we'll take a look at the boundary files here. All right. So what my usual practice is, is to copy the entire thing here. Okay. Copy and okay, I'll paste it. I mean, you can use any editor you like paste okay um, in a Windows subsystem for Linux it may be slightly different shouldn't be all too different but yeah so uh, we all have this all right and then we know that the the one that's the wall is this one called auto one so let's let's change the uh, type to wall Okay, so let's change the type to wall and we'll see what happens when we run change dictionary. So change uh, dictionary. All right, let's see. 
Okay, so what, what happens? Uh, it actually changes the type over here to wall. So we can take a look at the constant polymesh uh, boundary. Okay, and we'll see that change dictionary actually changes our entry to wall. So after you run your snappy hex mesh everything, you can use change dictionary to change your type to wall. Now, uh, I'm not sure at the moment if it works for changing the, the patch names, but let me try. Let's put this as inlet. Let's put this as uh, outlet. And let's put this, oh, oh no, this one is a curved wall. I'll just put wall. This is just an example. Outlet. Okay. And let's run change dictionary again. All right, change dictionary. All right. So uh, apparently it does not do anything because it, it gives us this uh, uh, this uh, this error this warning it says from form function blah 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 blah. It says that uh, there is a non-existing entry inlet, a non-existing entry outlet, a non-existing entry called wall. So um, the Change dictionary, I mean, it's, it's kind of confused. You know, what, what is it supposed to do? There is nothing there. I mean, the entries are not there for it to change. Okay, so at the moment, you can see that change dictionary only helps us to you know, edit the boundaries, I mean, the, the type of patches in the boundary, and also potentially helps us to uh, change you know, our boundary conditions if we so wish. Okay, as long as the patches there are correctly named, they'll, they'll be fine. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, uh, we'll need to take a, take a few extra steps in order to uh, get this, uh, change the names of this, uh, these uh, boundary conditions. But at least, uh, you know, uh, we, we have an idea of what change dictionary does and um, hopefully that will help you, uh, you know, uh, learn how to script in uh, the boundary changing of boundary conditions because you know when you do block mesh you are able to write in the boundary conditions there straight away but when you do block mesh snappy hex mesh may not be as straightforward you might overwrite the poly mesh files and everything with your snappy hex mesh and when you do auto patch everything is again overwritten so uh, what do you need to do if you want to you know save all this data of what you want to name the inlet and outlet patches and what kind of patch do you want you need to run change dictionary and you need to run an another few files okay so uh, let's let's just uh, very simply add this to git uh, git add uh, and git commit okay so change dictionary uh, add, uh, entry added Okay, so that's all. That's all for now. Um, that's all I'll do for now. Uh, next time we'll talk about uh, perhaps how to change these these patch names. Maybe yeah, we'll need to take a few extra steps. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.